Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this third Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday will be a very special time as we have set aside a part of the service to honor our mothers and to give thanks to all the women who helped raise us to adulthood. Two weeks from today, not next Sunday, it's Mother's Day, so we won't, we will be having a church charge conference. And the reason for that is we need to have the church decide on selling the parsonage in Wadena. And we will take the money from that sale to apply to paying off part of our loan. So as the church, two Sundays from now, we'll be having a church charge conference after service in order to make that decision. That way people can have time. Uh, there's a bucket, there's a special offering going around for Ukraine. And we will be giving as a church through UMCOR. And that's the United Methodist uh, Committee on uh, Relief. And the reason we chose to give through UMCOR is there are certain people that you give the money to and a big part of the money you give is given to pay overhead and administrative costs and workers, etc., etc. Um, we feel that it's best to give our money to an organization where our money goes to where we want it to go. UMCOR's uh, volunteer and the few people that they have employed, we, we pay them through apportionments, etc. So um, all the money we give will be going to help the people in Ukraine. Um, so, uh, benevolence have, offering for Ukraine. I have one more announcement. Um, next week, you will see the baby bottles. They have arrived. So that starts Mother's Day and ends on Father's Day. It's for the LAPS program for babies and moms. And we get, we get ours through Staples. And anyway, I will bring them next Sunday, and you can fill them up. And then I'll pick them up on Father's Day. So there you go. <laughs> Amen. And I see each and every day um, progress is made. Uh, today, when you go out for after church fellowship, you will notice the uh, counters are in. A reminder, if you come to the church this week, you will have to use the kitchen door because Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, they will be doing the floors in the entrance with the epoxy and in this door. So... If you do come to the church, <laughs> please don't <clears throat> walk through. <laughs> you won't like it. Uh, that epoxy is pretty sticky and bad. And, uh, but we do want it to cure. So if you notice in the newsletter, um, I mentioned that, you know, to use the kitchen door if you have to. Or better yet, you know... Um, if you don't have to come this week, don't come <laughs> until after that is done. For The workers will be here for that. Anything else that I missed? Rejoice, all Christians. Christ is alive. Let us stand and sing the third stanza of hymn number 318. Christ is alive. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Hymn number 304.
Let us pray. O God, who blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of all faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. One six. first reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 20. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any who, there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judah on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and to their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hand on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Please join me as we read Psalm 30. Found on page 786. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, Lord my God, God I, I cry to you for help. help. And, and you healed, healed me. me. O Lord, you brought me up, up my soul from shoal. 
Restore me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, all his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. Surely the Lord's anger is but for a moment. The Lord's favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have loosened my sackcloth and girded me with gladness that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will will give thanks to you forever. Our second reading today is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 11 through 14. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Hymn number 591, Rescue the Perishing.
gospel reading this morning is taken from John chapter 21, verse 1 through 19. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But his disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for there were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they had landed, they saw a fire of burning coals with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 or But even with so many, the net were not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself. And went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands. And someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of debt by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we read two passages, one about Saul in the book of Acts, we know him better as Paul, and one about Peter. I was jokingly telling my wife if I was going to title this sermon, I would call it, Peter and Paul had a call. But in a real sense, we all know the story of Saul who became Paul and on the road to Damascus experience and how God called him, Jesus himself, even though he already ascended into heaven, came and gave a call to Paul. And because of Paul's conversion to Christianity, we have all those books in the Bible. Paul did indeed, uh, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, did indeed call Paul and Peter. 
Let's look at Peter first. The scripture said afterwards, if you remember the story, we are continuing in the book of John. We read chapter 20 where Jesus on Easter Sunday appeared to his disciples and showed them his hands and feet. and They were all happy. And then a week later, he appeared again and Thomas was finally there. And we had that last week with the doubting Thomas. Scripture made it that this is the third time Jesus appeared. But in the meantime, the disciples apparently left Jerusalem and returned to Galilee. If you stop and think about it, the, the disciples, especially the 12, now the 11, had been following Jesus for three and a half years. They saw him killed on the cross. They saw him Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. They saw him again a second time a week later. They are no longer in close contact with Jesus and only see him once a week. What kind of relationship do you have when you see a person once a week? Not much. From daily walking and following Jesus and doing things with him to seeing him now and then. Now and then. So Peter and the disciples, and the scripture said, Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, again, Thomas, uh, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and two other disciples. John did not record which two. But apparently, if you start doing the numbers, you know, two, four, six, seven, more than half of them are there. Where the others are, we don't know. But Peter, being Peter, decided, I'm going fishing. I'm no longer following the Lord around the country. I'm going back to my old profession. But the thing is that Peter did not realize is once the Lord called you to do his work, you no longer go back to your what? Old life. Peter went out and, he, they, and, and they fished at night. And, and the reason for that, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't usually go fishing at night. As a matter of fact, if you go fishing at night, the, the game warden think that you're doing what? Something wrong <laughs> around here. But they fished at night. And the reason was it's like kind of Arizona, hot. You don't want to be out there in the middle of the day. So they fished at night and they would bring in the fish early in the morning and sell it in the market first thing fresh because they didn't have refrigeration and stuff. So it's a normal thing for them to fish at night. Have the fish there first thing in the morning. But Peter, a professional fisherman, James, John and other professional fishermen fished all night and came up with nothing, no fish. And here Jesus comes along and told him, throw your net on the other side. And I don't know if you ever caught this. This is the second time that Jesus encountered them while they were doing their profession. The first time was when he first called Peter, James, and John and told them to throw their nets. And they pulled in a large cache of fish. Did you notice the same miracle? After they fished all night and they had nothing to show for it. They threw out their nets and they caught such a large amount of fish that the light went off in John's head, or at least John claimed it went off. And, you know, he's the one writing this book. He said, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a little suspicious. You know, John writes the one the Lord loves and he comes up with the idea. And if you remember uh, last week, he outran Peter to the, the tomb. I guess you could do a little author's privilege when you are the author. But he came up with the idea, it is the Lord. And Peter being Peter, type A personality, uh, my wife claims that Peter suffers like I do from foot and mouth disease. I open my mouth, say stuff sometimes before I think. Peter being Peter, 
The scripture said they were about a hundred yards away from the shore. Rather than waiting with the other disciples and pull the net in with the boat, he put his outer garment on, jump in the water, and get there what? First. And then when Jesus said, bring some of the fish, I mean, there are six other people in the boat. One of them could have picked up some fishes and brought. But Peter, being Peter, ran back to the boat, drug the net in on land. Did y'all catch that? <laughs> and then got the fish. Peter can't help but be who he is. None of us can Sometimes we think if we change location or scenery that we can change. But if you have problems, as I've told inmates over and over, if you, know, if you have problems in Minnesota and you move to Arizona or to Texas or anywhere else, the biggest problem you have is you and you take you with you. How many of us would rather blame life and its circumstance and other people and we never look at what? The real root of the problems in our lives is ourselves. And Peter, being Peter, I mean, stop and think about all the crazy things Peter had done. When Jesus asked the question, who do they, you know, he was the first to speak up. When they arrested Jesus, he grabbed the sword, ran to the tomb, and now, jumping out of a boat and, you know, not even to mention walking on water, <laughs> you know. Peter is Peter. And he can't help himself. Jesus reminds them that he is the Lord. He took bread and he broke it with them again, ate fish. And after the supper, Jesus asked Simon Peter this question. Do you love me? And Peter answered, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lamb. And, and that's the question that God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, asks us today, isn't it? Do you love me? And as Christians, we all responded, yes, Lord, I love you, and I'm willing to what? Follow you. Isn't that what Peter had done? If you remember the story with the first catching of the big net of fish, this, I, I don't know about you, but the, the scripture made it, there were large fish and there were 153. That sounds like a small catch today. But you have to remember, they had small boats and their nets were not, you know, modern nylon and stuff. It was, would break a lot easier. Scripture made it quite clear. The nets did not break with this large catch of 153 fish. But Jesus was pointing out to Peter, if you love me, you would follow me and feed my, you would do the work that I've given you to do, not go back to your own life. So Jesus again asked Simon Peter, do you, what, love me? And Peter answered, yes, Lord, I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Be busy doing the work that I take care of the things I want you to take care of. But the scripture said that a third time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And did you notice that Peter was hurt? Because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus' response was, feed my sheep. And the same response that whenever we say to the Lord, I love you and I'm following you, God says you have a job. You're not just to take care of self. But we are also supposed to care for who? Others, the sheep of the Lord, the household of God. Being a Christian is not just about self, it's about taking care of others also. We'll pick up with Peter again. Let's look at Saul, who we know as Paul. Scripture said, meanwhile, Saul was still breeding out murderous threats. We had met Saul a couple chapters earlier in the book of Acts. 
And the story went like this. Saul was that young man when they were stoning Stephen who gathered up the cloaks. He was encouraging the people to what? Stone Stephen. After all, Stephen is a heretic. He believed in Jesus and the resurrected Lord and teaching in his name and the chief priests and everybody gave orders not to do that. Not only did they kill Jesus, they are now killing Jesus' followers. If you remember last week, the scripture in Acts, Peter and the apostles were hauled in for questioning before the chief priests and they told them, we told you to quit doing this. And apparently, the chief priests and the Sadducees were following through now on their what? Their threat. If you keep teaching, we are going to kill you. And one of the ways they were doing it was they were stoning people. Saul was a very pious religious Pharisee And he was still angry that here is these people teaching things and saying that the Pharisees had killed Jesus, hung him on a cross. And he was breeding murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. And so he personally took it upon himself. He went to the chief priest. He asked for letters to go to the synagogues in Damascus and to gather up everybody who were teaching this heretical teaching. And we know the story. On the road to Damascus, Saul encounters the Lord, this bright flash of light. And Saul fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul asked, who are you? Saul didn't even know who he was persecuting. Who are you? And Jesus answered, I am Jesus, the one whom you are persecuting. And then he was blind and he went there and he, did you notice that for three days Paul, Saul, was blind and he did not eat or drink anything. Let me translate that for you. Paul, Saul was what? He was fasting. The second thing we see when Ananias had the vision was, he said, there's this man, Saul of Tarsus, and he is what? Praying. Two of the spiritual disciplines that we practice was fasting and prayer. And Saul was, being a religious person, was fasting and praying. And then the Lord came to Ananias, a disciple, and and told him in this vision, go to the house of Judah on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And Ananias, I don't know about you, but I I would have had this reaction. Ananias said, Lord, I've heard many reports about this guy. That he has done great harm to your people, your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come out here with letters from the chief priests to gather us up back, haul us back to Jerusalem and have us what? Stoned to death. I don't know about you, but if you are a Christian living in a communist country and they're going to arrest you for being Christian, you'd probably want to keep what? Quiet. You wouldn't want to go to the communist party and say, you know, what? I'm a Christian. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. You see, when God chooses us and we respond, yes, Lord, here I am. Just as God chose Peter and said, follow me, as God in Christ chose Saul and said, follow me. When God comes calling and we answer, we are changed. That's why Saul changed his name to Paul. The next thing we see is as a disciple of Christ. Whenever someone changed from being a non-Christian to being a Christian, they become a part of the family of God. 
no matter who they are or what they have done. Saul did a lot of horrible things. Stephen, stoning. The scripture said he was breeding out murderous threats. He had letters to arrest and drag these Christians back to be killed. But the moment Saul was converted and became a Christian, Ananias, the Lord told him, go for he is a fellow what? Christian. And so Ananias went and entered the house, placing his hand on Saul and, and listen to the words that he said, Brother Saul, the Lord who appeared to you and had sent me. I spent 26 years in prison dealing with People who had done some pretty bad stuff. Some of it was horrible. I mean, I, I could always look up their name and number and see what crime they had committed. But the moment they became a Christian and lay aside their new life and became a Christian, one of the things that is incumbent upon me and you is that we should what? Welcome them in. They are now what? A part of the family of God. And that's what Ananias was able to do. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road, he sent me so that you may see again, but most importantly, that you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we know that Saul made the conversion because the scripture said immediately after the scales fell off, he got up and he was what? baptized. Saul didn't waste any time. He was, you know, I'm now a Christian. I'm going to publicly make this known. He got baptized. And then after he was baptized, he took food. I mean, Saul didn't even want to wait, you know, for, to restore his physical strength. He was baptized, then he took some food, and then he spent several days with the disciples in Damascus, and he immediately began to preach in the synagogue that Jesus is the Son of God. The very thing that uh, on his way there he thought was what? Heresy. Now looking at both Paul and Peter. We see when God calls us and we say, yes, Lord, I love you. I will follow you. That means that we are no longer in charge. Listen to what the scripture said. Verse 18. Jesus speaking to Peter said, very truly I tell you, when you were younger... You dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But now that you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Being a Christian and saying yes to the Lord and following him means that we stretch out our hands and God leads and take us sometime to places we might not want to go. Look at what Paul was, Paul was told to Ananias, that Paul is God's chosen instrument and that he will suffer. Verse 16, it says, And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. I could tell you if I was Peter or Paul, Peter, for example, eventually died. John made it quite clear. He outlived him. He said, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of debt by which Peter would glorify God. Paul, in his own letter, he point out that he was beaten. He was shipwrecked. He starved. He was in prison. They stretched out their hands and somebody else dressed them and led them to places they did not want to go. The point is, they accepted Jesus Christ as their what? Lord. And what that means is Jesus is our Lord. 
is that he calls the shot. He is our Lord. He is our master. He tells us where to go, when to go, with whom to go. When we were younger and we, didn't, we weren't following Jesus, we could do whatever we want, when we want, how we want, with whom we want. But now that we are a part of the family of God and we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord, we are no longer in charge. We sing the song, wherever he leads, I will follow. Listen to the last verse. Verse 19, what I call C. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. Isn't that what Jesus is still saying to you and me? Follow me. The word of the Lord. Please join me in affirmation of all faith. There is one God, God, the Father. The Father. All, All things, things come, come from Him, and we belong to Him. And there, there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. All things exist through Him, and we live through Him. Amen. Amen. This week, the church prays for the church in Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Ub. Uzbekistan. The word Stan is mean land. So it's the land of the Turkmen and the Af Afghans. So all those, there's a guy in the ch the, at the other church named Stan. I said, there's a lot of Stans here today. <laughs> Are there any joys or concerns? I have one. I got a, Sandy Pratt sent me this. And evidently, I, a couple weeks ago, we prayed for Barry's ankle surgery. Well, I was off a month is all. He's going to have that Thursday, May 11th. But she does say thank you for your prayers and help and to the congregation for more prayers. I believe in prayer, and Barry will be laid up four to six weeks. So. Okay. I have yes. Okay. Anyone else? Praise for the Malone family. What? Say it again. Go ahead, Wendy. Wendy said the same thing. Praise for the Malone family. Ron and I family. Okay. Anyone else? Because it is uh, the first Sunday of the month, we'll be doing um, communion. We will have our prayer. We'll have a unison prayer of confession, followed by a moment of silent prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you ask the question, do you love me? And we have responded, yes, Lord, I love you. But loving you, O oh Lord, means that we are to be busy feeding and caring for your sheep, following you and doing your will. That means, O oh Lord, that we are to do what you command us to do, what you want us to do. Many of us want to follow you but do things our way. Father, may we recognize that being a Christian means giving up our rights, accepting you as Lord, as God, means that we are no longer in charge. Father, as Americans, where we think of freedom and equality and independence, we, we forget that before being, and more important than being an American, is being a Christian. May we ever be mindful that we are Christians first and that we serve a risen Savior who we are willing to follow. Allow us, O oh Father, to say, yes, Lord, I love you. And may we 
do so by doing your will each and every day. That means accepting our fellow Christians. We have differences of opinions and perspective, but Lord, we are your people of love. May we truly love one another. Be with our church during these days. Father, we pray for you to be with the church in Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Lord, some nations that have many problems. Many of them border Russia. Many of them or all of them are majority Muslims. Lord, we think of Afghanistan, especially during this time with the Taliban. Father, we ask for your blessing upon the church, for many of them cannot publicly declare themselves as Christians, and if they do, they are persecuted. Just like Saul went with letters to arrest and drag back, some of them live in fear. But they are willing to follow you as Lord and Savior. May we be so willing. May we as a church do your will no matter what. Father, we thank you for your love and care. We ask that you be with Gary as he will be undergoing surgery. We ask for the Malone family. But we Pray for Christensen as she returns to the nursing home. Continue to bless and heal her, especially at her age. Father, we give you the praise and glory for all the many blessings. Each and every week we see something new appear in our building. And the next few weeks, O oh Lord, as we finish up this project, May we realize that it is merely a project so that we can worship you and spread the good news to others so that they will have a place that they can worship you, where they can have Sunday school and meetings and other things. May we truly be willing to say, yes, Lord, wherever you lead, we will follow. Christ, O oh Lord, invites to his people all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another by our unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, we, we confess, confess we have we not, have not loved, loved you with our, our whole hearts. hearts. We, we have, have failed, failed to, to be an obedient, obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done, done your will. will. We, we have, have broken, broken your law. law. We have, we have rebelled, rebelled against, against your love. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors, neighbors. and we, we have not heard the cry of the needy. needy. Forgive, Forgive us, we pray. Free, Free us for joyful obedience. obedience. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Bring forth all that you have and all that you are, offering your lives and your love to God. The morning offering will now be taken.
please join me in singing hymn number 377. Um, just so that you know, my favorite song, It Is Well With My Soul. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets, 
and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery and to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word on the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of fate. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come, come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake the one loaf. The bread which we are sharing is, is the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourselves to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to, to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A post-communion hymn, hymn number 310.
benediction followed by the chorus of He Lives. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.